Welcome to The Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Tinker's Construct. Today we're going to be covering armor. So let's start with the beginning. There are three different types of armor. First and foremost, you've got your traveler's armor, as you see here. I am currently wearing it and displaying it, as you can see. Then comes plate armor. This is going to be a lot more for defensive use, but uh, the traveler's armor has a lot more for the upgrade options. Then comes the slime armor variants, which has several different skulls that you can enhance, as well as the different slime uh, armor sets. And they're not much of one for any kind of defense, but they do offer quite a bit for upgrades and specifically abilities. Now, I won't be going over every single kind of ability or upgrade or even defensive option that there is for these different armors today, but I will give you the ins and outs of them regardless, as well as show you a little bit on how you can do some of the upgrades and modifying uh, on your own. So starting with the Traveler's set, it pretty much looks really weak. You compare it to something like uh, iron and it, it kind of shows that it's a little bit less, but ultimately it can become even better than diamond armor. It all depends on how you end up upgrading it or modifying it more specifically, as there are different versions of things that you have. I have a very modified version here uh, that I'm wearing that has been enhanced with diamonds, emeralds, different kinds of uh, protection modifiers, netherite, redstone, uh, cactus, all sorts of stuff, as well as options that you can even zoom with, uh, <laughs> and I don't even have Optifine installed. But your base set starts off, well, really basic. It's all made pretty much with just some leather as well as some copper for the different parts and pieces, except for, of course, that the goggles comes with a little bit of a glass pane. And if you do want to repair these, it just costs you a little bit of copper, which is relatively easy to come by. So it's a great set to start with, and I actually recommend it over a set of, say, iron to start with, because its durability may seem low, but it can be enhanced very easily, especially if you end up finding some of those early on diamonds. Instead of making a diamond set, you can just strap them onto your traveler's set and increase the durability a considerable amount, as well as its ability to defend you. So let's take a look at the different stats on these here. If I look at the goggles specifically, they and others of the Traveler set will all have the same stats in some ways. One is the upgrades. They'll all have three upgrade slots, two defense slots, and one ability slot. Now upgrades, you have a lot of different things that you can do with those. Specifically, if you look at something like this Traveler's Vest that I have been enhancing, it has some diamonds, some emeralds, some netherite, and many other things added in on there. As far as the ability, that's going to be dependent upon you, and those can be traded for upgrade slots depending upon how you want to do this. But in this case, I decided to use it to enhance the strength of any kind of Tinker's weapons and tools that I have and gave it a bonus 10% strength addition. Now you don't have to do stuff like that. You can do all sorts of different things. These are all modifiable and upgradable as you like. Now the defense slots, they pretty much will enhance defense. And I'm going to kind of show you how to do this using the Encyclopedia of Tinkering, which is the one that compiles all of the different uh, sets of these with upgrades, defense, slotless, and abilities. So upgrades. If you look at those, you've got plenty of things that are going to just give you lots of options. Some of them are rather general. Other ones are more specific, like damage-based. And then, of course, there's some that are specifically for armor. They are not necessarily going to work uh, for those that can be used with tools, and some of them might not work the other way around. If ever you are unsure, make sure you have the mod JEI or just enough items installed. Press U on the item, and then ignore the enchantment uh, tab here because you, you technically can't enchant these things unless you're in like doing creative commands. But if you go into the modifier section, you can see all the different modifiers that you can add on here. And they each have different kinds of uh, visibility on here. They also tell you limitations. And if you hover over the word, it gives you like a brief rundown of it. So this is really, really helpful for just kind of getting a brief glimpse or an idea of what you might have an option to do. 
as you only have one ability slot on this you can then decide all right well abilities they have this little like star icon here next to it so i can just kind of scroll through these and if you look something like unbreakable it has this little uh, icon here by hovering over it it says unbreakable requires netherite and reinforced five to apply that so it's something you kind of want to take into consideration that sometimes it requires more than just this one ability slot Scrolling down, you can see now that there are things like this with a little chest icon. This represents a defensive option, something like blast protection, dragonborn, and so on. And you'll see a little stair step. This means that you can add multiple parts to it. 24 emerald reinforcements are required to get one complete level of blast protection. But it doesn't mean that you have to have 24 just to get that blast protection. Just by putting one emerald reinforcement on there, you are gaining at least 1 24th of that level. And the same with any of the others. They have this little stair step icon for incremental options. And of course, there's plenty to choose from. Fire protection, golden, knockback, magic, and so on. Melee protection being one of the best ones out there because most mobs are melee or projectile based, though there are others in other categories. Then there's even others, like revitalizing. Instead of a defensive option, it just gives you more health, which can be really, really useful. You can stack it up to three times, but it will require multiple defense slots in order to do so. Moving on to the next section, we have upgrades. And it really is just like a general stat boost. In this case, adding a diamond here, you're going to increase just about all the stats on there. A really big uh, durability bonus. Emerald is going to give you different options and so on. But this is all stuff I'll be covering in the future. Again, this gives you an idea of the exact items that you can use these on. For example, experienced can be used on traveler's pants. This is specifically the item that I was doing the research on or that I clicked on to find out if this works. If you want to know if it can be used on another one, you'll then have to click U on those and see that there's something different. In this case, bouncy is available for boots and so on. So you'll probably want to scroll through these and see which ones are going to be best for you. Once you get to the end of the upgrade section, you'll notice that there are these little book icons. It says no modifier slots are required to apply this. This is something that is just free and often has some kind of limitation of one, but not always. For example, Overslime doesn't have a limitation, but it does have its maximum amount that it can have at any given time. A lot of these other options, like Recapitated or Resurrected and Writable, etc., will just add on an extra upgrade slot, making your armor potentially that much better depending upon how you end up enhancing it. That's kind of the basics on how I've been able to easiest find ways to upgrade the armor. Pressing the U while hovering over the armor piece, going to the modifiers tab, and seeing what different options you have available to you at your fingertips. But keep in mind that you will be limited by what it has on here. Now, as before, I said that the Traveler set has three upgrades, two defense, and one ability. Now, those numbers may be changeable. For example, there is, by adding a golden apple to your armor, it will use up an ability slot and give you two more upgrade slots. There's also a future item that has yet to be released that may increase defense slots on any armor items. As for upgrades, there are a slew of uh, options at your fingertips. By adding skulls or discs, book and quill, uh, or end crystals to your armor piece will increase it one upgrade slot per. So looking at these traveler's boots, by adding in a skull or a head of some kind of mob, a music disc, a book and quill, an end crystal, and trading out that ability slot with a golden apple for two more upgrades, I could add on six further upgrades on top of the three that are already there, giving you a total of nine. That is pretty ridiculous. And you can do this with any of these items. And that also works for the other armor sets too. Now let's move on to some of the other options. We've got the plate set, which is really, really good in itself because it comes with a lot of defense slots, which, well, will help to better defend you. It also has a built-in knockback resistance and armor toughness. Now when you compare it to a straight up diamond helmet, the durability is, eh, but similar, a little bit less in most cases, a little bit more in others, and it actually has similar stats, but a diamond armor set is actually a little bit better. Here's the thing though, remember these are unupgraded, and they are made from a rather expensive material, manulin. Each one is going to require some kind of 
manulin ingots and possibly chains. And of course, the uh, way to repair it is with a manulin ingot or repair kits. Now, you will notice that each of these all have some similarities as well, where they each have only one upgrade slot, but they do have four defense slots, which is twice as many as the Traveler set and they have one ability slot, same as the Traveler set. Feasibly, you could add in several of those different modifier upgrades to increase your upgrade slot, giving you several more options and better balancing your armor set. Then you can enhance it, like I have this set here, giving you a much stronger set and resistance ability. For example, I have 8% explosion resistance, melee resistance, and projectile resistance on each piece of armor. These all stack together. Now, some things will or won't stack depending upon what they are, different modifiers that you're adding to your different armor pieces. But in this case, it's quite substantial because these resistances also stack with the armor. So you're not really taking a lot of damage after this. I also have used some of the different abilities on here. I've got projectile protection, springy, strength, blast protection, bouncy, just so that I can end up bouncing around and not take fall damage. But enough about those ones, let's talk about the main event here, and that's going to be slime skulls and the different slime armor pieces. Each of these come with built-in options on them, but they also have no armor, none. Unless you're talking about slime skulls, in which case some of those will have the option of doing so. So let's start with the slime boots. These automatically come with the bouncy and leaping one option. What this effectively means is that, well, I can actually jump up two block heights, which is really useful. And because of that, I'm also bouncy and I will be, have the option of just bouncing on things. Now these slime boots are actually made with ender slime melted and poured over a rabbit's foot as a composite. Now each of these items, besides not having any armor inherently on them, they do have five upgrade slots as opposed to the Traveler's three or the, the plate sets one. So if you really want to go upgrade crazy, this is the way to go. Now the slime shell actually gives you a 4% resistance bonus, which is kind of nice in general. Comes with pockets and protection one. Protection one obviously is just going to be a defensive mechanism, but pockets one is going to allow you a measure of extended inventory storage. By holding down sneak, pressing I, I can open up the slime shell pockets or your pants pockets basically and you get an entire row this is one of the few pieces of armor that because it already has an ability modifier on there if you add in more levels of pockets you can get even more though than any other piece of armor and yes there are ways of adding in an ability slot that is by crafting it with a dragon head or by crafting it with this setup that you see here that will add in one extra ability slot but only one or the other not both that slime shell pants, by the way, is made with ender slime being poured over a shulker shell, of course, because storage and pockets. So moving on, we also have the slime elytra. This is just a more durable version of an elytra with upgrade options uh, or modifier options as it is. You might have options of increasing it, its abilities, stats, and so on. And it works the same as a regular elytra does, where you can just use fireworks to get around and fly just as you would with a regular elytra. And as with the other slime items, it also repairs with ender slime. And to make one of these, well, you just need an elytra, pour some ender slime on it, and you're good to go. Now let's talk about slime skulls. There's quite a variety of them. If you haven't already noticed when we started the video, there's a few to go over. Every single one of these different slime skulls has one same or similar ability, and that is that they have a disguise effect. That will give you a shortened radius for detection of that specific mob that it imitates. Any of these ones, you just get the, uh, the skull or the head of the specific mob, then you just pour some under slime on it, and you get yourself a slime skull, specifically of the mob head that you have there. And each one has different abilities as well as the similar ones that they all share. For one, they're going to have a really high durability, uh, at least compared to most other helmets. Now each one has a different effect. Let's go with the first one here, Blaze. By adding this on, obviously I look a little bit more like a Blaze. And by having fire charges in my inventory, I can launch them out by pressing a specific interaction button. And it will go out 
in pretty much a straight line so you don't have the the drop off but there is a, a like a five second cooldown if you look in the top right corner there there's a little blinking icon that lets you know as soon as you can fire again and launch it next let's go to the cave spider slime skull and if i have a foe that can poison me nearby it will hit me as it normally would but i'm not getting poisoned from it because that's pretty much the built-in ability now here's the problem though if i take this helmet off get poisoned and put it back on it does not remove the poison so you're going to have to make sure that you're wearing this thing to prevent the poison to begin with this next one is a creeper slime skull why you would want to have this i really don't know but i am going to show you a little something with a totem of undying here by having one of these in my hand I'll be sure to survive the experience. That's right, I blew up the place. Um, that's pretty much what you have the ability to do is self-destruct. And if you notice, the area that I was in just kind of got blown apart as well. Now if I do this again without the totem of undying... Yeah, you die. Next we've got the Drowned Slime Skull. This one is probably one of my favorites. By putting this one on, switching to survival mode, and I'm underwater. Let's spawn in an enemy. You can see that my air bubbles are about to run out, but just by hitting them, I am gaining air bubbles back. So you can breathe just by attacking something underwater. All right, this next one is the Enderman Slime Skull. This one, well, it just looks pretty cool in general, but it's mostly to prevent you from taking damage in a way. Oh, well, yep, there you go. You'll notice that I teleported away. That's one of the possibilities for uh, wearing this. It does have a cooldown, though, of several seconds, and it happens randomly and not too often with melee attacks, but when it comes to projectiles, uh, it does happen quite regularly, provided that your cooldown is uh, done. All right, let's go with the Husk Slime Skull. This one's very specific and can be helpful in many situations. And that is the ability to, well, send plagues back to where they came from, uh, kind of, in a way. So first, let me drink a, a potion of poison. Yes, I'm now poisoned for 45 seconds, but let's switch this out, spawn in a villager, and I'm gonna poke him once. Now he's poisoned. You can spread different negative effects that you currently have onto other enemies or targets that you hit. All right, this next one is the spider slime skull. This, besides making you look really creepy, will allow your positive potion effects to last longer. I have none right now. I'm drinking a potion of night vision for that lasts three minutes. I drink it and it lasts for three minute 45. And here we have the good old traditional zombie slime skull. But with this on your head, you have the wildfire ability. First, by setting yourself on fire, standing in the flame it will then extend the amount of time that you set targets on fire considerably and that leaves us with the skeletal varieties we currently have this skeleton skull here if i put this on you'll look well same with all of them a little bit creepy grab myself a bucket of milk and when i drink it i gain resistance for a minute that simple pretty good though if we grab this stray slime skull it gives me calcified effect, which this actually changes things a little bit. Enemies that I attack at range will get a specific slowdown effect. Now I only have regular arrows in my inventory, so if I shoot a target, they then get a slowness effect. But that's just in general. I don't even need to have the calcified bonus to do that. This is just an added benefit of this skull in general. If I get myself calcified, similar to the uh, skeleton one, but in this case, it means that you can then give a slowness effect to your melee attacks. And last but not least, we've got the Wither Skeleton Slime Skull. This one here, besides making you look just really cool, well, it, it will allow you a withering effect on your target. There you go, and I'm not even calcified. But if I am calcified, and I drink this, as you can see, I have that effect on me now. When I poke my target, the wither becomes much faster than it was before instead of the slow effect it had been before. You look a little down. Let me help you out. Get healed. All right, 
So that pretty much covers it for the new armor sets that is currently included in here. I will be covering armor abilities and defenses and upgrades as well as different modifiers for the tools and weapons in a future uh, episode. So if you did enjoy this one though, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, be sure to stop by on Twitch, click that notification bell, and until next time, folks, I'll see you.